In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a camera to your Sonic Pad and then set up time lapse video recording. This is the fifth video in my Sonic Pad Basics series, and if you haven't seen the other videos, you can find them linked in the description below. Using a camera with the Sonic Pad is very simple, but unfortunately, not all cameras are supported. Creality give a very short list of compatible cameras on their website, which I've linked to in the description below. If you find a camera that works that isn't on Creality's list, then let me know and I can add it into the description below for others. I decided to buy a Logitech C270 webcam to use with the Sonic Pad. The main reason for buying this is that it doesn't have autofocus and the focus can be manually adjusted if you pop the front cover off. This means that I can set it in one position and know that the focus isn't going to change for each shot and ruin a time-lapse video. This webcam is also on the list of Creality's tried and tested cameras and isn't very expensive. The only downside is that even though it is HD, it's only 720 and not 1080 vertical lines. To install your camera, start by plugging it into a spare USB port on your Sonic Pad. There is a USB port marked for camera on the back of the Sonic Pad, but you don't have to use that one if you don't want to. Then simply enter the camera setup page that you'll find on the configure page of your Sonic Pad and then click on the spanner or wrench icon in the lower right hand corner. Turn on the option to connect to your camera automatically at startup and to enable time lapse photography and then go back to the previous screen. Click on the box with the camera icon and then the green tick. You should now see a small image from your camera that you can expand out to full screen by selecting the option underneath the image. If you don't get an image after clicking the green tick, then come out of the camera page and go back in or even try restarting your Sonic Pad. Once you have your camera connected, you'll be able to view the feed on another computer on the same network via a browser once you've enabled it in the settings. If you want to see how to connect to your Sonic Pad remotely from another computer on the same network, then you'll find a link to the guide I made in the description below. Since we enabled the time-lapse feature already, the Sonic Pad will automatically record a time-lapse video each time you print. You can view the result from the camera page by selecting the folder icon at the bottom and selecting the file from a list of any recordings you've made. You could do the same in the web UI by going to the time-lapse page where you can also download the files. By default, the time-lapse videos that you'll get will look just like a normal video of your print but in fast forward. Where time-lapse videos start to really look good is when you move the print head to a specific position every time a picture is taken. This way, when all the images are stitched together into a video, it looks like the print is growing out of the print bed and looks much more impressive. The Sonic Pad gives you options to do this too. To have the print head move to the left hand side of the bed while the picture is taken, all you need to do is select the When Nozzle is Moved option in the camera setup menu. To enable more control over where the head parks for the picture, we need to insert a quick post processing script in our slicer. In Cura, this is just a case of selecting Extensions, Post Processing, and then Modify G Code. Select Add a Script, and then click on Insert a Layer Change. Leave the When to Insert box as before and type the following into the G-code to insert box in capitals. Timelapse underscore take underscore frame. Close this window and now anything you slice will tell the Sonic Pad to take a picture at every layer change, but using the settings we're now going to look at. To find the full range of timelapse options, we need to use the web UI. First, scroll to the camera section, click where it says default, and another menu pops up. Clicking the Enable slider is all you need to do, but you can change its name, orientation, and any other settings you want to. After you save any changes, scroll all the way down to the Time Lapse section. Select the camera you want to configure the Time Lapse for if you have more than one, and then click the Park Head slider. When you do this, a whole list of new settings become visible beneath. Most of these settings may seem obvious, but I'll run through them anyway. Parking the head means that the print head will be stationary while an image is captured for each frame of the video. Park time is the length of time in milliseconds that the print head will be stationary while an image is taken. Park travel speed is the speed in millimetres per second that the head will move to its park position. Park position is the location that you want it to move to for the picture. There are some default positions to choose from, but you can also select custom and then define the specific X and Y coordinates you want it to go to. Park position Z-hop is the amount you would like the Z-axis to move up for the picture. 
as the nozzle might move quite quickly over the top of printed sections, you probably want to set this to a minimum of a millimetre to avoid any unwanted collisions with any stray bits of filament. Use firmware retraction should only be turned on if you use firmware controlled retraction settings instead of controlling the retractions through your slicer. I'll cover this more in the intermediate series, so leave this unticked unless you know you need it. Then we have retraction and extrude distances and speeds. This controls how far and how fast the filament is pulled back away from the nozzle when the printhead moves away to take a picture, and then reversed when the printhead moves back to start the next layer. I'd recommend copying in the retraction settings you use in your slicer to begin with. If you get stringing, you can increase the retraction distance or speed, and if you get gaps, then you can increase the extrusion settings. Delay compensation is the amount of times in milliseconds that the camera should wait to take a picture after the printhead stops moving. Start by setting this figure to half of the park time figure that you set above. Verbose G-code usually means that there's extra information added to the G-code to give more details about what is happening at any time. If you haven't turned on verbose G-code in your slicer, then leave this turned off. Render settings gives you options for the resulting video made from the images once they're all stitched together. You can experiment with these, but other than FPS or frame rates per second, you probably won't need to change anything here. Then last, we have the option to reset all of the time-lapse settings if we want. The best thing to do is experiment with different settings and find out what works for you. Personally, I like to park the print head over what will be the tallest section of a 3D print and set the Z-hop to a couple of millimetres. I think this gives the impression that the print is being squeezed out of the nozzle as it moves up, but you do you. Leave a comment below with any settings you find give a nice clean time-lapse video that might help others out. To start the next video guide for your Sonic Pad, click here. I'll see you there.